friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to do a book review. I haven't done one of these in a very long time, so bear with me as I trudge through this book review. Today's review is going to be on a book that I just finished, and it is Tell Me Lies by Corolla Lovering. I'm not 100% sure if that's how you say the author's name, but I pretty much will never be picking up this author again because I spent pretty much all month reading this book and it's not even 400 pages. <laughs> And I only gave it one star. Okay, before I jump into my thoughts, I want to tell you how long it took me to read this book. I started this book on June 12th. I was still in school. I was still teaching June 12th until June 26th. And yes, I did take a break for Buzzwordathon and Romancelon, but yeah, this book took me forever to read. And I just think because nothing really sparked my interest. From the synopsis, it sounds like it'd be a really good, like fast paced, like sexy, thrilling read. And the cover is gorgeous. And I was just really anticipating this and I was just so let down. And not only that, but like I contemplated DNFing this several times and I just never did. So it's told from dual perspectives. You get both Lucy's perspective and Steven's perspective. They're the main characters. They're the couple that are in this book. So Lucy goes off to college. Um, the, Lucy and Steven are both from New York, but they both go out to a school in California for college. So the majority of the book is set while they are in college and randomly at one party, oh, before I get started, I should also say trigger warning for drug use, possible eating disorder, and body dysmorphia. Okay, now, so they go out to, they're in California. I think Stephen is a year ahead of Lucy and they're out at this party and they see each other and He's obviously instantly attracted to her, but she is not to him. And he keeps trying to get her to go out with him. And she keeps turning him down. Um, but then she's like, okay. <laughs> so then they end up through the years. He has a girlfriend and he's still fucking Lucy. And he also fucks other people. So not only is he cheating on his girlfriend but then he's like with Lucy saying he's not with this other person and then he's not. Stephen is like the worst kind of guy that you could possibly bump into and like start a relationship with because you think he's like the one. You know he's charming enough and you think like the things that he says are like so nice and so like special and he really does love me. Girl he doesn't really love you. He's a douchebag. Walk away. And like the thing about this book is, is that it deals with them going to a lot of parties and having a lot of sex, but there's nothing steamy about it. There wasn't like one sex scene that I was into. I never shipped them as a couple. I just saw his douche bagginess from like so far away and he would outwardly like not show emotion, not like he would say he would call and he wouldn't call or he'd say he was going to text and he wouldn't text and he was like sleeping with multiple people and all of the women, all of the women that he was doing this to knew he was doing it. They all knew he was a cheating bastard and they continued because I'm sure they made them feel special. Um, he would say these one-liners like Lucy being the main character. Um, he would say Lucy in the sky with diamonds or he would say like you're not a Honda you're a BMW and you know just things like that. They're just like so cheesy that I just could not stand it. So it's an on again, off again relationship that Lucy's friends, well, they're kind of like all in a friend group, you know, kind of how you are in college, but all of Lucy's friends say like, he's bad news. And eventually she, since she's getting so much backlash from her friends, she stops telling them things and they don't even realize like how bad it is, but she's always trying to like lose weight and, um, you know, have that thigh gap and like be better looking and skinnier and prettier than all of the other girls so that his attention is solely on her. Um, but it never is. It's, it's not even about that. It's, but then she judges other people like so hardcore. And so I don't like Lucy. 
I don't like Steven. I mean, I felt for Lucy because, like, I could see you being, like, insecure about yourself and thinking this guy is for you and falling in love. But, like, knowing his point of view and his side of things, like, Lucy should be so happy that it doesn't work and he's never dedicated to her. So like I said, it's in college and a little bit after college. And that's the thing, like after, I guess in college, he made an excuse why he had to be with Diane. And then after college, they go both go back to New York. So, well, he's already in New York for one year and then she has one more year of college. And then that whole time they're split up. But then after she gets out, she's like, oh my gosh, we're together again. And it's like, no, if he hasn't been talking to you this whole time, like why? But he was just a charmer, that's why. So um, it's really about toxic love and betrayal and like cheating and um, there's no real meaty plot other than Lucy trying to be with Steven, Steven being a douchebag and stringing Lucy along and then like, I thought there was going to be this like really cool plot point and it briefly mentions it basically um like surface level mentions it like what happened and then at the end it kind of says that Lucy realized what happened but like there was no what's the word I'm looking for there were no consequences for Steven's actions Ever. At the end of the book, I wanted Lucy to fucking kill Steven. That's what I wanted. That would have made this an, an amazing book. I would have probably given it four or five stars if she would have killed the damn bastard. But she didn't. And I don't know what, like, resolution we finally got to at the end. It was just kind of like, okay, and that chapter of my life is over. And I was just like, what? How? Why? Ugh. So it had, I don't know if it had a prologue. Let me look. It's just been so freaking long. No, it's told in parts. So like four different parts. And I don't even know why it was split into parts. Okay. So anyway, there are two things that I want to share with you. One was kind of like a good one and one just kind of sums up the whole book. So she's talking about Summer and I feel the same way about Summer. Like Summer, I am living my best life. I am loving it. And as soon as school starts and fall is here, I'm kind of like... <laughs> so let me read that. It's on page 80 and it says... Okay. That summer in Nassau County, it still felt like summer. The midday air was warm enough for swimming, and the maple tree in our front yard was green and brimming with life. Not a speck of fall was in sight, which is the worst time to go to school because you're as far from the promise of summer you'll ever be. Ahead lie red leaves and pumpkins and homework and turkey and Christmas carols and snow plows and valentines and mud and painted eggs and daffodil buds pushing their way up out of the thawing earth. And not that any of that is bad, but none of it is as good as summer, which is why I always feel a little let down those first couple of weeks of September, especially when the weather is nice. I was like, yes, that's exactly it. It's not like you hate it. It's just like summer is so far away. So anyway, that's how I definitely feel about summer, um, especially being a teacher. <laughs> and the last one comes from the very end of the book, as you can see. I, it's only, let's see how many pages the book is. The book is, oh, the book is 270, oh, 200, 372 pages, and this is on page 371. So here it goes. Everyone has that guy loose. That one guy you think you'll never be able to shake. The one who gets under your skin and epically fucks you up for a little while. I know I did. So uh, that's what this book was about. It was about the one guy that epically fucked Lucy up and that's all the story is. Not only that, but it had a chance to reach for more like the friendship between Lucy and her friends but even though they like talked about 
her friends and stuff like that and they were like this is her best friend and Lucy you're my best I never felt that connection of like that best friend vibe all the characters all of the side characters were like surface level characters you never like she never attached herself to one it was always like Brie or Pip or Jackie and it, you never knew and like there was no good friendship vibes there was no good relationship vibes and I think that because she was so stuck on Steven, like she missed so many other good opportunities. There was um, a scene or there was like a little plot where finally she decided I need to go to therapy. And I think it was mainly regarding her parents were concerned about her losing so much weight and seeming depressed. So she went and her uh, psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever, um, prescribed like some medicine for her and to get her out of her depression. Like he actually diagnosed her with depression and she went on some medication and she started feeling better. And then Stephen popped up in her life and screwed it all up. And yeah, it's just so I rated this book one out of five stars. I do not recommend because it's just going to be a waste of your time nothing happens. It's a slice of life story that is pointless because you, this is not entertainment. This is not something you want to live through. If you've lived through it, you've done your duty. You can check that box. You don't need to read about it. So that's my review of Tell Me Lies. I know it was a little bit of a downer, but maybe I saved you from picking up this book. But that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Like I said, I know it was a little bit of a downer, but have you ever read that book where you just like didn't know the point and you kind of kicked yourself for not putting it down sooner? That's this book. Anyway, I'll see you guys in my next video and I hope you're having a great day. Bye!